All right, my name is Mark Dixon, Jr. This is for comms 550. Uh, this is the presentation we had to do on our research paper. Uh, what I am presenting on today is the importance of nonverbal immediacy between a teacher and student. While verbal immediacy is important, it is not as important as nonverbal communication is. Uh, nonverbal communication is seen as far more influential and can sometimes even override uh, verbal types of communication that are taking place. Nonverbal immediacy uh, is important in two different ways for students to learn. It, well, it's cognitive learning and effective learning. This study that, that I've done uh, intends to identify the 10 types of nonverbal behaviors that affect nonverbal immediacy and briefly describe them. We will then review the effect of nonverbal immediacy through a Christian perspective. In this case, we will uh, look at pastoral care, um, the relationship between a pastor and their students or the congregation, uh, if you will. So let's get started. First off, what is immediacy? Well, Chesbro and McCroskey in 2002 uh, defined immediacy as the degree of perceived physical or psychological closeness between people. Now, there are two types of immediacy. There's verbal and nonverbal, as we discussed in the introduction. Now, verbal immediacy is in reference to the words we actually speak. Uh, if you've ever talked with someone and, and when they say, well, we need to do this, we need to go to the movies. Um, it makes you feel more a part of it instead of them saying, well, I, I'm going to go to the movies. So the immediacy there is impacted by the words, um, by the actual words being stated in the sentence. So you have your verbal immediacy, but then you have your nonverbal immediacy. Uh, nonverbal immediacy it can deal with multiple things. Um, it can deal with facial, stru facial structure, your use of your eyes, your hands. As you can see, my hands go all over the place. Uh, and that's just how it is. It can have things to do with your tone. Um, you're probably thinking right now, this guy has no idea what he's talking about uh, because my, I'm so high-pitched. Now I'm a little nervous. I've never really talked to a camera before. So you can pick up on those things through my nonverbal tendencies. So what I decided to do was I, I wanted to focus on nonverbal immediacy. Why? Well, I said it earlier, because nonverbal immediacy can override what uh, verbal communication um, entails, what it, what it gives you. And here, here are the two things that I discussed earlier that nonverbal immediacy impact. They impact cognitive learning and effective learning. Um, now, Karen Kirk um, from SERC had this picture on Google, and it, it's perfect um, because it shows your effective domain and your cognitive domain. Your effective is your motivation, your attitudes towards the class. Your cognitive domain is your recollection, your comprehension of what's going on. So it can affect your motor, your, your motivation, uh, and your drive to learn things, and it can also affect your ability to learn things. And it's so important uh, that we understand these things so that we can teach our students uh, properly. Behaviors of nonverbal immediacy. We discussed earlier that there were 10 of them, uh, according to Chesbro and, and McCroskey. There is instructor appearance, gesture and movement, there's facial behavior, eye behavior, vocal behavior, space, touch, environment, scent, and time. Now, I, I highlighted environment and time, uh, well, one, because we don't have much time, so I'm just going to hit on some key uh, aspects of, of these two. In the environment, if you have a dirty environment, if you have uh, an, an environment that, um, that, you're not, that the students aren't comfortable in, that is going to affect the cognitive and the effective learning of those students. They're going to be so worried about, I hope this ant doesn't crawl on me, or I hope this mouse that's eating this cheese over here isn't going to come and eat me. 
Uh, they're going to be focused on, on that kind of thing. Environment also uh, is in relation to the humidity. Like right now, I am in a visitor's locker room in, on the campus of a college I work at, and it is humid in here, and I am miserable. Uh, so it, it kind of takes away from their ability to focus on what you are saying. Time. One important thing about time I wanted to, wanted to mention is that in the studies shown, time, uh, the use of time for a teacher can truly affect the nonverbal immediacy because you can make yourself seem so unapproachable. You can make yourself seem so uninterested um, by pushing away someone. Now, another interesting thing about time is that the more you demand as a teacher of your students, the more time they are going to demand of you. So you need to think about that when you give your, your students, you know, 20 uh, assignments in a week, and they are going to have question after question after question and a huge research paper and, and this and that. You are going to have to make yourself available for those students uh, with your own time because of the amount of time you expect of them. Uh, and it, it's, it's a wonderful thing, uh, time is, but it can also be a pain uh, depending on how much you're willing to put into teaching. Now, all of these behaviors and structure appearance, uh, we'll go over that quickly. Look at me, I am wearing a dress shirt, a red tie, and you would probably take a, a look at me and say, ah, oh, this guy, he might know what he's talking about. Well, oh, then I'm wearing khakis, now I look like a hooligan. Uh, so it's just, it depends on uh, your perception of the teacher. Uh, if they come in very formal, they're going to seem like they know what they're doing, uh, but they don't seem approachable. Now, if they come in casual, they're going to seem like they, they're approachable, but they're not going to seem like they're no, they know what they're doing as much. Uh, so you need to look at that. Um, it, Chesborough and McCruskey actually say that we should dress formally, uh, the first couple weeks, and then informally uh, the last few weeks. Now, so we saw the 10 behaviors of nonverbal immediacy through a secular world. Um, to the secular world, excuse me. Now, the secular world uh, uses those, and how close you get to someone can impact your, your view of them uh, or their view of you, uh, how much you touch someone, how you touch them. All those things play a role into it. And the same thing for the, the biblical lens. Um, what I did was I, I looked at Mark Pope, who uh, did a dissertation in 2012 at Liberty University on uh, pastors, or pastors, excuse me, and the people that follow them. And the nonverbal behaviors that Pope found that were very important um, were the use of the eyes, the face, body posture, hand gestures, touch, and discerning self. Now, I highlighted touch and discerning self um, just because those were, those were the ones that were so obvious in the Bible through the Scripture. Uh, you have to remember, though, when we look at this, um, that nonverbal immediacy consists of action and interaction between a sender and a receiver, um, but also to the person with a biblical worldview, there is a sender, a receiver, and then there is God. Uh, so when looking at this, you have to remember that the scripture is the absolute truth. Um, so to look, there's plenty of examples for the use of the eyes, the face, Jesus' body postures, hands gestures, when he'd lift his hands to the heavens and bless people. Uh, but I wanted to get into touch uh, for a second. In Matthew 8, um, Matthew 8, 2 through 3, uh, the Bible says, Right away a man with a serious skin disease came up and knelt before him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Reaching out his hand, he touched him, saying, I am willing, be made clean. Immediately, his disease was healed. Can you imagine having that kind of power with touch? You do. Mentally and physically, you touch someone, even as a pastor. Uh, you, can, you can help them. It just depends on how you do it. Defend, depends on your immediacy. 
Now, discerning self. Jesus never, um, never swayed from his interaction with people uh, because, oh, well, I'm going to die for these people anyway, so let me go crawl in a hole. That's not how Jesus works. And that's how, you know, as pastors, we're supposed to go and spread the word of God. You spread the word of God and you are supposed to act like him. Jesus is our model. And that's what we have to model our lives after. So that's the importance of nonverbal immediacy through a biblical world, a biblical lens. Jesus used it. He used it to reach people. And that's the whole point of it. We need to reach people. Now, the conclusion of this research, um, it has provided greater, great evidence for the importance of nonverbal immediacy. Uh, there are different characteristics for both secular and Christian worldviews. These characteristics influence uh, relational immediacy uh, between the teacher and student and pastors and their people. Uh, the Bible has provided examples in the word that is deemed absolute, is supportive of the use of these nonverbal behaviors and their impact on relational immediacy. Further research should be done, though, on uh, the behavioral patterns in the Christian world in which nonverbal immediacy uh, can be measured because there's just so little evidence, or not so little evidence, excuse me, so little research done through a biblical worldview, through a Christian perspective on nonverbal immediacy um, that you really just have to take what you've learned from the secular world and find it in the Bible. There's nowhere in the Bible where it directly says uh, this is right and this is wrong when, as far as it comes to uh, nonverbal immediacy. Um, the research only skims the surface of the power that understanding nonverbal immediacy can have between a teacher and student. Again, my name is Mark Dixon. I want to thank you um, for this opportunity. Uh, and I'm really excited to, to hear your comments, and, and I appreciate your time. Thank you.